guys, it's Ricky here for another Sunday prep. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the YouTube channel. Turn on the notifications so you guys can get notified whenever we're putting out more content. Remember, every middle of the week, you guys get the midweek watch done by my boy Goose. He's been on absolute fire last week. I think it was Thursday, like three or four of the names from his midweek watch triggered, were taken, and paid out nicely. I think a lot of people in the community really, really hammered some of those ideas. The Sunday prep from last week was on point. There were, I can't even remember how many ideas from the Sunday prep that played out almost to the T as to what we were kind of looking for. So I hope you guys are finding what we're putting out useful and actionable. If you guys are liking this stuff, give us the thumbs up, leave some comments. If you don't like it, go ahead, thumbs down. Doesn't bother me one bit, but again, leave some damn comments, people. We need to hear some feedback. I wanna know what you want more of, what you want less of. Next thing on the docket is, remember, this Thursday is the third episode of The Method and Mindset uh, with me and Kim Ann Curtin, the Wall Street coach. That is on TrueTrader.net's Instagram channel. Not mine, not Kim's, TrueTrader.net's Instagram channel. That's 5 p.m. market time on Thursday. And uh, I think they've been phenomenal so far. I, I think this week's is going to be just as good, if not better, than any of them. So hopefully you guys check those out. Also, we established a website to host even more free content for you guys. It's over at methodandmindset.com, and you will find webinars from both me and Kim Ann Curtin. So you'll get like trading technical type stuff, and you'll also get some psychological mental stuff. And it's over six or seven hours of absolutely free, amazing content. My, methodandmindset.com. Check that out. Let's get right into it this week, guys. Uh, this is obviously, you're watching this on 9-12, I'm filming it, this is 9-11. So like 9-11, you guys all know, is a pretty big day here in the United States. It's a day of reflection. Um, one of the key takeaways I always have from this day is just a refocusing on just uh, how short life is and how insignificant some of our problems really are in the larger scheme of things. I feel like I hammer on this every week in the Sunday prep, but man, it, ne it needs repeating constantly because it should be something that we're always mindful of and that is that there are there is a life you need to have and go live and trading is just what we do so that we can have the life we want make sure you guys are spending time with your loved ones make sure you guys are separating your self-value from your PL. if you have a red day and you know you take that out on your wife and kids or your husband you know that is not a sustainable work-life relationship because your family is going to be your biggest support system. They are not going to have that full support for you if every time you have a bad day in the market, you take it out on them. So you need to make sure that you realize you and your self-worth are not tied to your P&L. So that was the main focal point for me, obviously this being 9-11, you guys are watching it on 9-12, um, but that was what I wanted to hammer home. So let's get into the actual focus for the week, the, the ideas. As always, first we got the disclaimer. Guys, neither I nor True Trader or any of its affiliates are registered as security broker dealers. I am not a licensed financial advisor. Nothing that I talk about today is a solicitation to buy or sell any stocks. Trading is risky. You must understand, understand the inherent risk involved with the stock market. Everything you hear today is simply for entertainment and educational purposes only. So let's get into it. As always, we start with the broader market analysis. Here is your ES chart, the SPY futures. You can use the SPY if you want. I always prefer just to use the ES for this analysis. We got the pullback we want or we were watching for. And it's coming in. I'm not quite sure we have finished with this pullback. Um, we do have the 50 day below us. You can see the last however many like what five five times maybe more on this chart alone that are showing the pullbacks getting to the 50 day right we're not at the 50 day yet it's just below um if we don't hold the 50 day you still have the quarterly and the monthly just below it at that round number of 4400 until we pull back to those kinds of levels i'm actually going to be treating all pops back into the underside of the 20 day as my areas of possible resistance um yeah so i'm, I'm basically thinking that the move down is not quite done yet so I will actually have a lot more, we'll see it later when we get into the, the, the uh, ideas, but there's a lot more short ideas this week. Duh. Moving on to the 
NASDAQ, the NQ. Again, if you prefer, you can use the QQQ. Um, but again, this one, just no different than uh, the ES. You know, last week we pointed out we've had a narrow range and basically said if we lose last week's lows, wouldn't surprise me to see the 20-day pretty quick. Lo and behold, we lost last week's lows and here comes the 20-day. Didn't quite get there yet, but it, does, it wouldn't surprise me one single bit if we do go and test that. Um, you have the monthly pivot right below it. Honestly, that, that 15K level looks so much better as support. Um, so if we lose the 20 day, I'm not freaking out. It's not the end of the world because I would actually be really, really happy to see a test of this. I mean, you can see it was the shelf where we broke out from to make the next leg up. So a retest of that with the 50 day right there in the quarterly, if we get that, then I will definitely be looking for long setups on strong tech names. So that's the idea here. Now, again, just like the ES, until we pull back deeper, I'll treat all pops back into the underside of this, let's just call it 15.5 uh, for rounding sakes, uh, as possible areas of resistance and be looking for short setups. So that's it for the NQ. All right, moving on to Bitcoin. Whew, who remembers this one from uh, last week? This big flush, right? This is the first real big panic type flush we've seen in Bitcoin in a very long time. Um, may have caught quite a few people off guard. You know, we lost the 200 day, came down to the 50 day, but by the end of that day that we had the big flush, it had already reclaimed the 200 day. Now we are at the time of filming this, you can see we are still below the 200 day, but I'm not really worried. I, you know, this flush is still, in my opinion, just a healthy something that was needed in order for us to kind of reset reestablish some levels and then maybe try to make the next push for the next leg higher. So uh, you can see we've put in the low from what that big flush day we pushed up and now we possibly have a higher low. You know, we won't know if this is a higher low or not until we come back above through this where you can see the line I've drawn. Um, I believe the level was 47. Let's see. 47.4. So 47,400 on the dot. That's the level to break above. If we break above that, then we've confirmed the higher low on the daily chart here, and we may be able to push back up. So those are the levels right there on the Bitcoin. Again, I don't trade Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies, but as you saw, I believe last week or maybe the week before I was trading Mara, I trade Riot. So I do need to keep an eye on these kinds of things. So that's it for Bitcoin. Moving right along. So the next section we always do is our sector analysis. Head on over to our barchart.com. Come in here and go stocks. Uh, stock market sectors and then I always sort this by short-term matrix and the notes I put down uh, in the blog or in the in the prep was boy oh boy what a change one week can make right I mean read across the board uh, complete you know just lack of strength anywhere um, and then and, you know obviously energy right back to extremely weak um, and if you couple that with checking out the ETFs, um, pull these up, start going through them, you can see, actually let me zoom out a little, you can see just how a lot of these look really, really like they're just kind of teetering on possibly like falling off a cliff. Not all of them, but I went through all of them, right? And a lot of them do. Here's, this is uh, industrials. Um, a lot of them have the same look. The one that I actually thought uh, was pretty good was this communication sector that right there still looks like a very intact chart so you know it's pulling back to support out of all the ETFs and all the sectors that one really looks like it's holding the strongest and if we go back to here you can see communications still still had a good month still had a good three months just had a, a, a small little dip last week down a percent uh, over the last five days so that's where you may see some of the strength um, if the markets do decide to find some bids. So that's the sector analysis. Now we get into the real ideas. Let's go. As always, guys, the first thing we go to with our setups are long setups. So let's get right into the long setups. And the first type we always look for are strong stocks looking for continuation. Now remember, there, weren't a lot of, of, there wasn't a lot of strength in the market last week. And so when going through charts all this weekend, making this prep, there wasn't a lot of ideas that stood out as having actual strength, which is why there's a lot more short ideas this week. But there was one name that stood out as strength, and that was AFRM. So um, 
as you can see, just a little more than a 50% retrace from Friday's price action would put us right into that quarterly pivot at 115. I also like that level for a few other reasons. One, there's an eight point ATR on this, right? So if we open right around where we close 123, you can do the math, right? Eight points puts us right into 115. So it would trade, it would have traded one full ATR if we were to pull back to that level. So it wouldn't surprise me to find support there. Also, if you look at the price, the intraday price action from Friday, 115 was that pre-market level that was put in, kind of keeping a lid on it. And when we kind of put in this higher low, we broke above it and you know we haven't retested it yet. So it would be nice to see that 115 level test, hold, see buyers show up, and I'll probably be one of them. So that's the AFRM idea. So that's all we have for the long setups. Usually there's another sector called uh, oversold reversion setups. Nothing out there right now really looks that oversold. That can change in a heartbeat. If we have something throughout the week that just gets hammered and falls off a cliff, which some of the stocks out there look like they could do, then we may have some of these setups. But going into the week, we got nothing under there. So the next, the next section we go right into is our short setups. And the first kind of short setup we look for is weak stocks looking for continuation. And trust me, there's no shortage of weak looking stocks out there. Um, I'm only going to throw a few at you, but trust me, there's a ton more on my list. Okay. Uh, Neo was the first one I thought kind of looks a bit, a bit heavy here, right? We tried to reclaim the 20 day slam back down. Now, when we push higher, it, it, it doesn't even really get anywhere slam back down. So basically if we lose Thursday's lows, I think this thing's in big trouble. The way I would, there's two ways to play it for me right now. Breaking Thursday's lows would trigger, and then I would look to short pops after that. Or if we were just to kind of get a pop real quick up into 3860 uh, off the open on Monday, I may look to fade that and just give risk uh, to Friday's highs. And I'll show you where that 3860 level comes from. It's right here. You can just draw a line straight across. You see that right in here was an important level, right? So 3850, 3860 in that range, that's what I'm looking for for a just right off the open, you know, a quick pop right into that level stuff. And I'm probably going to hammer in short because I, I, I feel like Neo looks really heavy. So that's the idea on NIO. The next idea on this list is JKS. Um, and basically just a really ugly candle on Friday. Slammed up into the 50 day and the 200 and, and sold off the whole day. Ended, closed the day on lows. Um, now, we do have the 20 day just below it. So here's the thing. The only way I want to play this is an early pop right off the open into that 49. You have the monthly pivot right up there, 49. So, and that's right around the 50% retrace area. Um, that's the where that's where I'd like to play this. So, if we just fall off a cliff off the open, I probably don't have a trade on this because uh, I'm not going to chase weakness on this uh, right down into the 20 day. So, the only way I'm playing it is a pop into 49s. That's the JKS idea. The next idea is Ross. Ross stores, R-O-S-T, and I mean, so retail across the board was weak. If you guys remember the sector ETFs, right? Like you can see if we lose uh, Wednesday's lows, the, the whole ETF, the whole sector may just have a lot of weakness and roll over. So, you know, you can take a look at any of these, um, these retail names and they all look nasty, but Ross just looks the nastiest, right? So we're breaking all kinds of levels here. Um, the one thing, the one disclaimer I put out there with Ross is that it's it's kind of thin. It trades a bit, it's a bit light on the volume. So make sure that if you take this trade or you want to trade something like Ross, that you understand sizing is a bit different when there's when it's less liquid because there's usually a bigger spread. So make sure you understand that like you may end up with a bit more risk than you anticipated just because of the spread and the liquidity. So make sure you take that into account. Um, the idea here is a pop back into 114s to get short. You guys can see the uh, quarterly and the monthly up there. And it was also a big level on the daily chart. So I, I'm looking for a pop back into 114 to get short on Ross. All right. And the last name I'm going to throw at you on this list is XPEV, XPeng. This is another electric vehicle sector stock, just like NEO. Chart looks very similar to NEO, right? And you know what's funny is it kind of reminds me of the sector analysis where I was like, man, a lot can change in a week, right? If I were to get rid of this last week's price action, you guys would see a completely different chart. In fact, last week with the community, I was talking 
about how this may be setting up for a really nice long if it started to clear some levels. But since then, you know, we've cracked that 200 day, we cracked the 20 day, back under the 50 day, and things are really starting to roll over. So, and you can see on Friday, the pop back into the 50 day got stuffed and we closed close to lows. Um, so basically what I'm looking for is a break of Thursday's lows to trigger and then short pops after that, just like NEO. And just like NEO, if, if this thing spikes off the open somehow back towards the 20 day, then I would probably also be there for the fade. This one trades good volume, has decent range. Feel like there may be a nice short here in XPEV. Um, make sure you understand that sometimes Tesla can catch a bid and, and this, this sector will get a bit of strength off that. But uh, you know, if the market stays heavy, these names probably are going to come in a bit more. And it, you know, if we lose Thursday's lows, I wouldn't wouldn't be surprised to see this thing test 35. So that's the idea on XPEV. All right, that's it for the week. Stocks looking for continuation. The next section is overbought reversion setups, and there's only one in here, and that's A bus. And usually, you guys know I don't put a lot of small cap stuff in here. These guys are not, you know, it's not a tiny float. The floats uh pretty big. Um, it's usually easy to borrow as well. The higher, the better. Um, so it's going to really kind of depend on where we're opening. Uh, cause if this thing's gapping down, I'm definitely going to be there to play any kind of a fade off, any kind of pop back into resistance, like really like that 440 to 450 level. Um, if it gaps up, there may be some stubborn shorts from Friday that may try to fight it. And then I'd be looking for higher, like five, you can see 515 is a level and five eighties. Um, just kind of depends on what it does if it gets to those levels, right? I'd be looking, basically the idea is lower highs for something with defined risk on this name. So that's what I'm looking for on ABUS. And that is the Sunday prep, guys. That's it. It's short and sweet. Short by, yes, lots of short ideas. Uh, now, if the market pulls back to levels of support, remember, this is just like the Sunday prep. You know, Monday night after the market closes, if we've pull back deeper and some things are starting to come into areas of support. Tuesday's ideas might be a ton of longs. Never know, it's it's day by day, but keep an eye on the market, guys. The market is your canary in the, the, the coal mine, right? So hopefully you guys know what to look for in those types of things. If you don't, come over to truetrader.net and give us a try because I constantly, constantly am teaching those kinds of things. And I really, really believe each and every single trader, no matter what market you trade, should know how to read a trend and should know how to read the broader market. So hopefully we see you guys over there. See you guys Monday at the market ready to crush it. Till then, peace.